Now, Fez, you gave me something uh, from the night that you said we met. Yes. Yes, that was a pack of matches from the club where I met you at. And that somehow meant something to you, and you thought that you could give it to me. And yeah. you said you grabbed it that night. I grabbed it that night because I wanted something as I was going out the door to remember that night by, and held on for it for years. Didn't want what never, decades. Yeah, didn't ever even think about ever giving it away. Because why I, are you shaking your head? No, there's um, some audio has come to light from I'd say roughly. 10 years ago? From 2002, from which two, is 12, 12 years ago, ago, from when we're on at WNEW. Who sent this to us? This was Justin. Justin sent this over. Okay, le- I haven't heard this yet myself. Let's take a listen to it. Matchbooks. He has them on a... Dis- friend of mine actually collects matchbooks. He has them on a display, in a display case, hanging mm-hmm. up in his living room. I thought, this is the most retarded thing ever. He gave me one, Ronnie. This is not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the club where we first met, me and no you. No way. Yeah. All right. I should have saved it for a gift. Yeah, that would have been perfect. I would have cried. I, I should have saved it for no. Valentine's. This, uh, oh, from you. my yeah. what yeah. the fuck? God. I said I should have saved it. What? I'm oh, gonna be sick. my God. I'm going to be sick. It didn't mean anything to him. It meant Holy something to me. Oh, my God. It's retarded that he would have had it. No. You said that night was so meaningful to you about meeting me that you saved the fucking matchbook. Yes, I did. That you got in, in 20 fucking oh two. No, I didn't take his. I had my own. You just said you should have saved it and gave it to me, and I made the joke I would have cried. <laughs> because I had one of my own. That would have been oh, one to give to you. Oh, my God. Everything's changed. Oh, my God. How could you, Fez? I did a nice thing. Yes, you gave me some fucking matchbook that someone gave you ten years ago. No, I didn't get it from him. I yes, had my you own. Did. You I just said heard I d- him. I said There's I should have taken just it. Heard. Audio evidence. Oh, my God. And you acted like it was the stupidest thing in the world to collect a matchbook from that place. I have gotten more and more sentimental over the years. you become a bigger fucking liar. It was still a nice thing to do. And then you let me sit and feel fucking guilty about your shitty fucking present to me. Years of guilt you had. Years. Chris? Yeah. Later today, they'll be handing out uniforms. Make sure mine says Team Sam. Done and done. Don't join Team now Sam. You're on my fu- He's worse. Seriously, now you're on my fucking list. Because you made me feel guilty for thinking that your fucking uh, president was a weird homosexual <laughs> love thing. You are the biggest fucking liar in history. This is gone. The one I gave you is from that night. You're a liar, Fez. Why don't you take your NEW fucking matches back? They're sitting up in the office, probably right next to that eastbound and down thing that you forgot to give out. I used a couple of them to smoke. By the way, uh, your chance to win signed gorillas. Uh, It's. uh, First responders at TV's Andy Daly. Uh, we're doing a terrible job with plugs, but I wanted to tell everybody that I am going to next week be with Voss and Bonnie on their podcast, and you can come out and see us live in the village. How do you find out where the uh, tickets are? That's at uh, thevillageunderground.com. Can you get tickets in advance? You get tickets in advance, yes. Where from? If you you can make your reservations at villageunderground.com for that night. That's next Tuesday, March 11th at 8 p.m. Maybe I should just throw those fucking matches out to people. I think you should. This fucking audio just blows everything up. I actually, uh, you know, I actually feel fucking dirty right now.
Yeah, Andrea says, so that matchbook is the Christmas gift that you would never tell us what it was. That's exactly right. That's the fucking Christmas gift. Um, Jeff wants to know, did Fez ever find his wallet? Why doesn't anything ever have a payoff? No, I never did find it. How's that a payoff for him if I find my wallet? Because of the entertainment value to the show. Since he uses his entertainment value. Uh, Brian, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, Evil Knievel's leather star and stripe riding suit. What would you do with it? Oh, man, I'd put it on right my bike around. <laughs> but do you realize what a dick you would look like riding down the road in that fucking suit? You would look like a cock. It's oh, a pretty cool suit. Hey, no. It's fucking ridiculous. He looks like a fucking idiot back then. It's a fucking clown suit. I think it looks pretty awesome. Everybody would go and, hey, look at that. There he goes again. Because awesome he could do that because he was jumping fucking things. No one dug him for the suit. They dug him because they're like, look, he's pretending he's Elvis. And look how tight that is around the cock and balls. Yeah, he's showing it off, man. It's kind of like Confederate Flaggy a little bit, too. I don't think they would have You're Confederate liked Faggy. They would have liked they would oh, not what did have I liked. Say? <laughs> if you're going to excuse me, I just can't get over this thing that I really believed his story. This is like, goddamn, this Justin might as well call him Deep Throat for the fucking shit he just blew up with us. It's like finding out your fucking life is a lie. Yeah. Sam, you are right, buddy. You are right. Oh. My new thing is when I smoke geese eggs. We pretend I light them first. I was I heard it was the light going off, I was about to smoke up these Japanese cigarettes. What are you doing with Japanese cigarettes? Turn your back on the old USA? I ran out of Marlboro Reds. So now I'm down to these Daikon men. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know how to speak. Can I get a fucking Daikon men from you? <laughs> uh, out of Reds, out of Fresno. I might I hope I'm not pushing this too far, but I know exactly what a rape victim feels like now. They feel like they've been raped. Your soul's been raped. This friendship's been raped. But here's the thing. I got raped and didn't even know it. And I had to be told years later. It's like you found out that you, that you got fucking knocked out or raped, and then you went on with the rest of your life. And once that rape comes, when you realize that rape, everything between the rape and the realization, you have to question. I don't need you to put a bow on that. Yes, it's exactly it without saying. Yeah. Like, is fucking Fez Kaiser so say? Well, one day he'll just be gone. The greatest trick that Fez Watley ever pulled was convincing Ron Bennington that he existed. And then he went back to Florida. You'll see him walking down I 95, taking stents out. Just fucking everything coming back. Motherfuck. <laughs> Polo coming to pick him up in the car doesn't say a word. <laughs> Pulling that mustache, see if it's real. Oh, I know that it's real because there's a wild fucking hair. Chris, come over and look at the wild hair here. Okay. From tugging on it. Oh, oh my god. Just go over and touch it. Okay. <laughs> He's being very, very quiet. It bounced, the wild hair. Sure he did. I want to play that clip one more time. Let me set this up for any new listeners. Uh, a few years ago, Watley gave me a Christmas gift of a pack of matches that he had framed. And I looked at it. And I know it was this like little club in Florida. And he goes, this is from the night that we met. I saved it all these years. I was very weirded out by it because I'm like, that's not something a man does. Saves a pack of matches, A. B said, I saved a pack of matches because we met that night and I had a good time. And I always wanted to remember it. And I've seen and like two decades went by. And then at least two decades. And then he gives me the pack of matches and it weirded me out. I waited three years or so before I shared it with people because I thought it was odd. All you guys thought, wow, 
Fez must really like you more than we thought. And then to find out the truth, he was given those matches in 2002 because somebody went back and found an old clip from WNEW. A friend of mine actually collects matchbooks. He has them on a display, in a display case, hanging mm -hmm. up in his living room. I thought, this is the most retarded thing ever. He gave me one, Ronnie. This is not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, from the club where we first met, me and no you. No way. Yeah. All right. I should have saved it for a gift. Yeah, that would have been perfect. I would have cried. I, I should have saved it for no. Valentine's. This uh, friend of yours? Yeah. The gay guy? Yeah, I think so. So, there's the truth, that someone gave him those matches, then he saying to me, I should have gave it to you as a gift, and me making the remark, oh yeah, I would have cried, and then find out the truth, that he fucking rat -holed them up his ass for a few years, put them in this shitty little fucking display case, and handed them to me, and I believed that was real. That was a real gift. I had those matches. All that I didn't get them in two thousand two. Then why Just, didn't why didn't you act like that guy? Why wouldn't you said that guy has something wonderful? Old matches. Because he was keeping a complete collection of matches from every bar he ever went to. Not something special that I thought was between you and me. There wasn't anything between you and me. You got him matches from a listener. No, I didn't get the matches from the listener. He tried I just to, found out the fucking truth now. He tried to give me the matches. I was I thought it was a really nice gift. How's that a really nice gift? You I thought took, it was something special. You took matches off a of fucking listener and you handed them to me. I didn't take matches off of the listener. Ron, go pack Joe a listener, sent me these <laughs> cigarettes. Would you like one? That's odd that you would feel so close to me to give me that smoke. It almost tastes like an American cigarette. But I'm sure that, you know, that's... Sure, it's stock Fez. Try to find anything that tries to make him look bad. No one will be happy until I'm dead. So, fine. Why would believe, we... whatever, believe whatever anyone wants. That was a gift that I kept. And I thought it was really nice, and I gave it to you. And now someone has to... I know it made you uncomfortable, and I apologize for that. But now someone has to try to fuck that up, too. <laughs> Someone has to fuck up. You making me feel uncomfortable? No, just any anything I tried to do. Someone out there has to try to make it look like the biggest fuck up ever. Says he. And uh, trust me, the heart attack is coming. I can feel it. I'll be gone soon. Is this a shoot or a work? It's a shoot. Well, then why would someone do a fucking job if it's going to give you a heart attack? Uh, then I that's, promise that's what they want me to do. Uh, then I promise you this. There'll be no fucking mention of you on the show. None. If that's where you where you go with it. It won't fucking come up again. Okay? It's done. Um... Scott, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, go ahead, Scott. Hey, I'm sorry. How you doing? Good. If, if Fezzy kept one book, he kept both. So if he's telling the truth, he'll be able to bring in the other book tomorrow. I'm not going to. There's. I'm not. I'm not having anything more than that. Trust me. I don't want to give anybody a fucking heart attack. That a pack of matches or a fucking thing could give someone a heart attack. That's the last thing I want. Sam, don't go running off to O&A with this. You'll kill him. He'll die. Um, here's Tom. Tom, you're on the Run of Fez show. Wow, Ron, I don't know what to do now. Jeez, okay. Well, I'll just say Team Sam, and then I'll say, yeah, the thing I'd like uh, from the TV show is uh, Batmobile from... Uh, Batman TV show 1966. Don't even bring it up. That's too I'm, stupid. That's I'm sorry. You know, this. We're dealing with life and death now. Purple guy, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, hang on. I got to put down my cake horn. Mm. Hey, I want to ask Fez, now that he's a big fat liar, are we supposed to believe him on his Please library? don't bring his name up. 
Uh, Austin, you're on the Run the Fez show. Ron, I know I can't name them, but there's two different people in that room, Todd and Fez. Todd gave Fez the matches. You're killing him. Monty in Texas, you're on the Run the Fez show. Oh, poor Fezzy. Stop it. Shannon, you're on the Run the Fez show. Hey, Ron, I don't need anything from a, from a movie or a television show. I'll tell you what would really benefit me would be a dinner with somebody like Kevin Smith or Stan Lee or even you and the... And the Ron and Fez crew. That, that, that to me. No, I could get that completely. If someone said to me, would you rather have something from a Kevin Smith movie or to hang out and talk movies with Kevin Smith, it wouldn't even be close. You know what I mean? Like, that would be I, fucking great to talk to the creator of that thing. But that's me. There's something about me that just doesn't. I don't get that feeling from objects. <laughs> Something that's like, they're, they're, but there are certain objects that just are bigger than life, like this goddamn Game of Thrones throne. It encompasses the entire show and books and universe of it. Um, but he, uh, this happened to me when I was a little kid. My dad was out on some business thing, and Don Drysdale was, you know, part of this corporate whatever. So he's a Hall of Fame fucking pitcher. So everyone gets a signed Don Drysdale fucking baseball. My dad gives it to me. He goes, this guy is Hall of Fame, one of the great aces on a fucking great team. The Dodgers pitching. Um, and I'm giving you this baseball. Like a week later, my dad sees the baseball. It's all fucked up, right? He goes, what did you do to your Don Drysdale baseball? I go, we fucking played with it. I had it in the fucking sandlot. He fucking fell down laughing. He goes, yeah, that's what a baseball's for. <laughs> Not sitting up on a, on a thing acting like I care about it. I got a Whitey Ford sign ball. It's great. And then my dad said this. Uh, trust me. Something bad happened, so I'll die from it. Damn. Yeah. Isn't owning that Game of Thrones chair sort of like a little kid with the race car bed? In a way, it is. I don't care. You got a fucking race car bed. I don't care. I have a, no. I have a fucking a chair made of swords. All right, it's better than race car beds. No, it isn't. It's the same <laughs> as. No, it's not the same as. It's better. It's the be same as, and you're a fucking moron. <laughs> it's better than that, man. You know it. You it's all know. It's worse. <laughs> it's fucking worse because at least you can sleep in a bed. Where that fucking sword bed it looks like the most uncomfortable thing in history. Look, I get an ottoman, I'm propping my legs up, I'm gonna nap in there. Um Rob in Michigan. Rob, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey Ronnie, before Fezzy has his heart attack, have him uh, trim his mustache. And I wanted to ask him who's watching his cat. All right, that's just just stop. Uh, Dave, you're on the Run of Fez show. Uh, yes, Ronnie. I would just like to know what changed. Uh, we were supposed to move to a new channel. I mean, we got Shelby, but as far as I can see, it's all the same. Fez melting down on the listeners and not going with the flow and crying. And How, how are we going to do in April, Fez? What's going to happen? You know, if he would have gave a sentimental cry but not threatened us with his death, I'd feel completely different. But I can't be responsible if this is all too stressful. If, you know, Sam running back with a tape is going to kill him. I can't be part of that. I know I talked to a guy yesterday who would love to be in radio. Would love to wake up and do a fucking show every day. That's all he wants to do. That's it. But that Game of Thrones <laughs> is shut for him. There's a saying in Game of Thrones. When you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. It's from the book. Here's what I would say. Yeah. It's about thrones when you play the Game of Thrones. Thrones! Maybe that'll be in the new season. If I had to come up with a tagline for Game of Thrones, yeah. it's Game of Thrones. You're never going to get laid watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> Plenty of people get laid to watch Game of Thrones. Not right? even the creator. <laughs> Not even the creator is getting laid right now. <laughs> it's a very nerdy thing to like it. I'm not going to lie to you. But I do see a lot of women reading the books on the train. Yeah, women are into it because, isn't there gang rapes? There's some rapes, yeah. Yeah. 
There's, this is the creator, George R. R. Martin, or Germ, as people call him on the internet. You don't think that you could be looking at future Chris with that? <laughs> <laughs> if I give you a little fucking hat, bad glasses. Well, we did look at. His, we do have the same fucking facial hair. <laughs> if I groom the beard out again. Uh, Josh, Massachusetts. Hey, Ronnie, how's it going today? Good. Good. Hey, um, really quick. Just, I'm not gonna drag it on, but if if I had an item. And someone came to me and said, hey, I got this item from there. And I had the same item. I would have brought it up. There was no mention of, hey, I got the same item. That's the only thing I'm going to say about it. Do you think you would, you would at least bring it up? But there was no he, mention He of did it. get busted today. And then he threatened his own death like it would be my fault if he died. Let me just officially say, that pack of matches was the greatest present I ever got. I sit and I stare out of it and I think about our great friendship. Live forever, my friend. That's what I say. Every night I hold up those uh, matches and I put on the Queen song, Who Wants to Live Forever? Who wants to live? Oh, I forgot to mention this. I am doing a show tomorrow night. Tomorrow evening. Uh, f- with Queen. I'm going to host a one-hour call-in. Uh, with Queen, what uh, radio station will this be? It's on Classic Vinyl, Classic Vinyl on Sirius XM. So you will be able to call in, and who all are we going to have? We're going to have Mr. Brian May. It's fantastic. We're going to have Roger Taylor. Wow. And the singer, Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert is touring with Queen, doing those songs now. And they're going on tour, so if you could ever say to your kids, all right, you're not going to get to see Freddie Mercury, but I could take you out to see Queen. All those things I made you listen to in the car when we were driving on vacation, and you're just like, why are you still playing those albums from the 70s? (laughs) Now you can play it for people. So call in tomorrow night. It'll be 6 o'clock? 6 p.m. on Classic Vinyl, Channel 26 on Sirius XM. 6 p.m. on the dot. That's going to be fun and exciting. Oh, hell yeah. And if things work out, and they ask me to go out on the road with them. What? You have to say yes. Yeah. I got to. I love that when Brian May came in a few years ago for his crazy ass book of really old photos. Yeah, he did do that. <laughs> Seeing Brian May in person, man, it's all it's ridiculous. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Uh Jim, you're on the run of Fez show. Jim. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Hi, Ron. Um I was hoping that I could help cheer Fez up. Uh maybe in the intern and Fez, Fez can scream at him again like yesterday. That intern has a weird voice. He does. He does. He does sound like... Who's interning for us today? Today, Wednesdays, is Howard. Oh. Big fan of the Howard. Guy. He's a good man. Big fan of the Howard. we got to find more stuff for him to do. But he's uh, he's working for you pretty steady, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got him, I got him cutting things. Cutting I don't know whether he has any respect for you, like past producers and... <laughs> Current producers, he lacks respect for you. You know, all those people don't respect me can kiss my ass. Uh, Dusty, you're on the Run of Fez show. Dusty. Sorry, I'm on a... Hey, 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 can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm on a bit of a delay. Is Fez still in the studio? I am not going to bring that up. I don't want to make him feel upset. I don't want to kill him. I love him far too much to see him die over something quite so silly. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't. Want, I don't want to feel like I'm blowing this out of proportion, but I feel like I'm saving his life right now. That this is some type of preventative surgery. I hope I haven't gone too far with that, but I consider this preventative surgery. Ron, you define codependent. I really do. I really do. Um, here's uh, Rob in New York. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, I wonder if Fez can feel that. 
That's Tom Rhodes breathing down his neck for his job. Let me tell you something about Tom. Tom <laughs> sent an article to Chris Stanley for the iBank. I, did you read it? Yeah, I read through it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> it, I, I'm not sure whether it went up or almost went up. It may even went up for a couple of minutes. And you give the thing of Tom is not comfortable with what he sent. <laughs> yeah. Which I can only imagine to be drug <laughs> when he wrote it and or wrote it up. So uh, he pulled it. Yeah. Uh, we may be getting a new one from him. <laughs> um, Taz, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Fez. Uh, I just wanted to say I'm a big fan. I would have been honored to get that matchbook from you. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. When I got that matchbook, it was so beautiful. And it was just, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me, you know? I thought you didn't move it for like a year afterwards. You know what? I say that because I was raised a certain way not to, you know, connect with my feelings. Oh. But I've had a breakthrough, and I can really explain what's on the inside. Wow. And it's shiny love. That's all I'm feeling right now is shiny love. The big ball of happiness and warmth. I don't know. I Again, I thought I said, I, I described it perfectly. This fucking thing that you have of, uh, let me just say the same thing back to you in my own words. I can't tell you how annoying it is. And I wish I could kill you through my words. <laughs> I wish I did have the power to kill through words. And I would be killing you. Who wants to live forever? Um... Hey, buddies. Hey, Tom and Madison. How you doing, pal? First, I'm doing great. It's beautiful up here right now. First of all, Ronnie, that thing with Queen, I, I can't wait. Brian, those guys, I mean, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to hear that. Good job. Whoever booked that song, bitch, good job, boys. But anyway, how would, That's how would Mr. Steve Leeds. Handle, how would the rest of you guys handle it if you got caught in what I think you call, Ronnie, like a straight shoot? Three years comes down the line or whatever, and they turn around. I mean... They haven't, haven't says he embellished the truth or what? It's kind of like a politician. We're used to it. It's how he's dealing with it. How would you guys deal with that? that if I got busted in this, I'd be cracking up. <laughs> I'd be rolling on the I, fucking floor I and said, I got you. I do shit like this to these guys all the time. Like Chris wants a four day weekend. He's making up a lie. I'm not, and I'm don't. like, go for it. Fucking crawl under the bob wire. Whatever you got to do. That's part of the fun of life. <laughs> There's no lies. I, I get it. Lying to your friends makes life worth living. Period. And people who say, I'm honest, are the biggest fucking liars in the world. I keep my fucking cards close to my chest. You ain't going to get my story. Now, on the other hand, Chris could come up, tell me something. He doesn't have to worry if it's in a lockbox or not. Because he's like, that fucking guy doesn't tell anybody shit. I know. I'm and when I do, you. it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> when I confide in you, it's a goddamn lie. <laughs> and that's me telling the truth. That's fucking meta. Yeah, this fucking, uh, this queen thing is going to be so much fun tomorrow. Oh, nothing but it's on classic vinyl, Channel 26 at 6 p.m. And you can call in. Yeah, you'll be I'm, able to call in. I'm basically just going to be hosting a bullpen of Carl calls. So I get the call, like Steve said, uh, Steve Leeds came down, he goes, would, if I can pull this off, would you do it? And I'm like, what? Why are you even asking that question? Oh, can I sit in a room with Queen? Yeah. <laughs> I think we could work that out. Now that is something I would say to my 14 year old self. One day? Yeah. Okay. Teachers just called you stupid. You fucking got in trouble again. Your parents are all freaked out. But one day, you're going to fucking sit in a room with Queen. I'd be like, okay, keep it going. <laughs> I wish I wish there was just shit like that. Whatever happens in between here and then, fuck it. 
The other day I saw, and this is not making this up, and I don't want to give the name out, but someone was throwing up here, major rock star from my youth. What am I saying, my youth? My now. (laughs) And I'm like, this is the fucking greatest thing ever. This is how I wanted to live my life. I felt like I was like I was hanging out with Chris Christopherson and the star is born. You a figment of my imagination or am I one of yours? Chris, look how good my life is right now. Hanging out with the Queen, hanging out with Voss and Bonnie. Maybe saving their marriage. Is there anything better? And that's happening next Tuesday at 8 p.m. at the Village Underground in New York City. Go to thevillageunderground.com for tickets. Um... Bobby, you're on the Run of Fez show. What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, I want to know, Ronnie, were you true to your word from that clip? And did you really shed a tear when you got those book of matches? Kind of like the crying game? I would have considered it an inside tear. <laughs> Look, I'm the f- if, if someone fucking got me, I think it's the best thing ever. And I got punked. I want to be here at the end of this. I never thought they'd get me, but I just got punked. Yeah, woo! You got to say it. When Dax was at the Oscars <laughs> with his lovely wife, Kristen Bell, if you would have told me years ago the guy from Punked is going to get invited to the Oscars, I'd say then Hollywood has become more casual than I ever expected. Cash. Do we need to break again? Yeah, we should break again. Are you sure? Or I can fucking you know take it to the limit. <laughs> we shouldn't take it to the limit. We have to break at least one more time. All right, so we're in no hurry to fucking break, is what you're saying. <laughs> we have well, you know, we can't take it to the limit. We just have to have one more break before the limit. Mm. Um, Jay, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, you're running a million bucks. Listen, I think you really should sit in with that uh, that contract meeting with Fezzi on April 6th and uh, try and work something in there to indemnify yourself from uh, him having a heart attack on the air, you know? No, he'd rather just stick it to me as guilt than anything else. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to... Uh, you know, go to jail for it for him to feel like he won. I'll just have to feel like it's all my fucking fault. And when someone says fucking trust me, I do. Um, if I was a beaver and I went into another beaver's dam and it was really nice inside, I'd be like, damn! And then we both have a nice beaver laugh for ourselves. I would, I'd fucking laugh. I would just, you know what I would do? I would say, this guy's so cool, I'm gonna give him a fucking log to gnaw on with his giant teeth. <laughs> Look, see, here's a diagram of Damn! <laughs> damn! Um, hey, Mikey, you're on the Run of Fez show. Mikey. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Hey, listen, I got a beautiful copy of The Croods, and I really would like for you to have it. Is that okay? Yeah, that would be great. Is that all right? Um, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to bring him back into the show. But right now, I'm trying to keep him uh, alive. Um, alive. Well, if that doesn't work, I have another one. Uh, Kill Machete? That's a good one, too. He's just bringing up all the different Movies. things that if he took a Fez, that the Fez tried to give to me. You're not pulling right, him out listen. of his beaver dam. He's not stopping. Damn! Damn. Don't those things look nice, though? Yeah, it's, it's a pad. I'd rather live in that than a fucking cave any day. Oh, a cave seems pretty cozy. You got no dough. <laughs> you got no dough. I can deal with that. The was, beehive would be good because that's like a high rise apartment building. With all the separate units. And then I guess the. Uh, I don't know where the queen lives in the beehive, but I would think that that would be the penthouse of the beehive. That was my only comment on that. Fuck you, Mikey. <laughs> Fake laugh. This is not Mikey, it's Steve from Philly. <laughs> I thought Mikey was still on the line. My mistake. Not a problem. Go ahead, Steve, what can we do for you? Oh, uh, man. Um, I got an idea for your radio show, Ron, for tomorrow. What's that? RBI Super Sounds of the 70s with Queen 
featuring Adam Lambert. Be great. <laughs> Super sounds of the 70s. Maybe the greatest movie DJ of all time. It, it's, it's be between him and Sam Jackson do the right thing, right? I mean, I mean, what? Other... What was his name again in that? Shit. We're gonna do a roll call. I didn't realize how Sam Jackson's getting up there too. How old is he? He's getting close to seventy. Good. He looks fantastic. It is true. It doesn't crack. <laughs> Wants to live. If they go, wait, we'd rather have you in this band. He was Mr. Senor Love Daddy and do the right thing. Mr. Senor Love Daddy. It's a hot one today. I guess also in the Warriors, that chick DJ that was telling them everyone, everyone in the city where the Warriors were, she was pretty good. Telling everyone to fuck them up. Yeah, that she was great. <laughs> uh, Joe, Joe, you're on the Ronnie Fez show. Ronnie. Yeah. What's up? Hey, um, you got Queen coming in. Are they going to do their uh, rendition of We Are the Cake Horns? No. You're going to fucking kill somebody. Don't be Sam. That Sam's fucking blood on his hands. We don't want that to happen. That's like murder, too. We want you to live, Corky! We want you to live! What movie, Chris? Live, Corky. Waiting for a government, you fuck. I'm having a bad, a, a moron day. Yeah, you are. Start, you with that, really are. start with that sad thing. John in Tennessee, you're on the Ron Fez show. You know, Ron, I was just thinking about this, but do you realize that you are a hero to Fez for the first time on the new show. Why is that saving his life? Yeah. You are a hero for the first time on the new show. I really do love the idea of being a, a fucking hero. It's probably the greatest thing that's ever done, and I don't need a contest to, you know, like a costume to do it. Eric in Atlanta, you're on the Run of Fez show. What's going on, Ronnie B? A million bucks, buddy. A million. Hey, uh, Fez, I, I owe you an apology. I, I called yesterday. Um, I did, asked about the cake horn thing. Um, talked to Sam this morning. I didn't know it was such a short, short subject. So I was, I was calling to apologize and make sure that I have not adversely affect our uh, uh, listener, you know, um, co-host relationship. We all good, buddy? I want a fez who makes up words. I'm running their cake horn to men. I want a fez who fucks shit up. You fucked up. I want a fez people talk about. People are talking about me. I talk about you for saying cake horn. I want a fez who respects co-workers. Fucking asshole losers around here got nothing better to do, and that includes Chris and Shelby. I want a fez callers can count Well, on. great. We got the Joe Jackson bit for the 400th <laughs> fucking time. I want a fez who trends on We're fucking on number Twitter. one trending in the United States. Hashtag cake horn. I want a fizz with a cake horn and a lawn. It's not about the cake horn, Chris. It is about the fucking cake horn. It's not. It's crazy. Hey, Chris, I Let's uh, Let's take a break here. We'll be right back. It is. Oh, is, did we pick, put up the picture of the surfing chick? I did not see her, no. Uh, let's yeah. try to make sure that goes up. Um, when we get back, this. My new thing, I think, is surfing chicks being the most beautiful people in the world. I'm done with models. You know, when you try to come around with your fucking model of the day. Hey, Miranda Kerr yesterday. Emily Ryajowski, the girl from Blurred, the model from Blurred Lines, she's in the new Entourage movie. Thus proving she's going to be the new it girl. The new it girl is that girl with the nice ass that hangs around here all the time. The Instagram ass. The oh, queen. Jen Settler. Jen Settler. Yeah, she's always taking pictures around this neighborhood. Yeah, she loves going right around the corner from here, actually. Dying to fucking see her in real life. <laughs> Dying to fucking glance at that ass in real life. She's a, she, she might not even be able... She can't even work out in a public gym. 
She just of course had, she can. Like, does she just gets accosted. I mean, she walks around here, she gets accosted. Her ass is Marilyn Monroe. I guarantee you, if she came in here, it would be the biggest star. Her ass would be the biggest star we've ever had. Uh, now I'm all about these, uh, these little surfer girls. Uh, we'll be right back to talk about that. It's the Ron and Fez Show. Ron and Fez on Raw Dog. Raw Dog. Series XM. Comedy. Hits. He has them on a display, in a display case, hanging mm -hmm. up in his living room. I thought, this is the most retarded thing ever. He gave me one, Ronnie. This is not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, from the club where we first met, me and no you. No way. Yeah. All right. I should have saved it for a gift. Yeah, that would have been perfect. I would have cried. I, I should have saved it for no. Valentine's. This, uh, oh, my yeah. what what the God. Fuck? I thought I should have saved it. What? I'm oh, gonna be sick. my God. I'm going to be sick. It didn't mean anything to him. It meant Holy something to me. Oh, my God. It's retarded that he would have had it. No. You said that night was so meaningful to you about meeting me that you saved the fucking matchbook. Yes, I did. That you got in, in 20 fucking oh two. No, I didn't take his. I had my own. You just said you should have saved it and gave it to me, and I made the joke I would have cried. Because I had one of my own. That would have been uh, one to... No, Fez, you gave me something uh, from the night that you said we met. Yes. Yes, that was a pack of matches from the club where I met you at. And that somehow meant something to you, and you thought that you could give it to me. And yeah. you said you grabbed it that night. I grabbed it that night because I wanted something as I was going out the door to remember that night by, and held on for it for years. Didn't want what decades. Yeah, didn't ever even think about ever giving it away. Chris, and why I, are you shaking your head? No, there's um, some audio has come to light from I'd say roughly. Ten years ago? From 2002, from which two, is 12 two, years two, ago, yeah. from when we are on at WNEW. Who sent this to us? This was Justin. Justin sent this over. Okay, I haven't heard this yet myself. Let's take a listen to it. Matchbooks. He has them on a... Dis friend of mine actually collects matchbooks. Five in the village. How do you find out where the uh, tickets are? It's at uh, thevillageunderground.com. Can you get tickets in advance? You get tickets in advance, yes. Where from? If you, you can make your reservations at villageunderground.com for that night. That's next Tuesday, March 11th at 8 p.m. Maybe I should just throw those fucking matches out to people. I think you should. This fucking audio just blows everything up. I actually, uh, you yeah. know... I actually feel fucking dirty right now. Yeah, Andrea says, so that matchbook is the Christmas gift that you would never tell us what it was. That's exactly right. That's the fucking Christmas gift. Um, Jeff wants to know, did Fez ever find his wallet? Why doesn't anything ever have a payoff? No, I never did. Oh you. my God. Everything's changed. Oh, my God. How could you, Fez? I did a nice thing. Yes, you gave me some fucking matchbook that someone gave you ten years ago. No, I didn't get it from him. I yes, had my you own. Did. You I just said heard I, him. I said There's I should have taken just it. Heard. Audio evidence. Oh, my God. And you acted like it was the stupidest thing in the world to collect a matchbook from that place. I have gotten more and more sentimental over the years. you become a bigger fucking liar. It was and still a you, nice thing to do. And then you let me sit and feel fucking guilty about your shitty fucking present to me. Years of guilt you had. Years. Chris? Yeah. Later today, they'll be handing out uniforms. Make sure mine says Team Sam. Done and done. Don't join Team now Sam. You're on my He's worse. Seriously, now you're on my fucking list. Because you made me feel guilty for thinking that your fucking uh, president was a weird homosexual <laughs> love thing. 
You are the biggest fucking liar in history. This is God. The one shit. I gave you is from that night. You're a liar, Fez. Why don't you take your NEW fucking matches back? They're sitting up in the office, probably right next to that eastbound and down thing that you forgot to give out. I used a couple of them to smoke. By the way, uh, your chance to win signed gorillas. Uh, it's, uh, first responders at TV's Andy Daly. Uh, we're doing a terrible job with plugs, but I wanted to tell everybody that I am going to next week be with Voss and Bonnie on their podcast, and you can come out and see us live.